Hello and welcome to the Spinnaker Industries training program on hearing protection, the care, use and type, version 1.0. At Spinnaker, your safety is our top priority. This is our agenda. First, we'll talk about the legislative requirements surrounding hearing protection. From there, we'll talk about activities that require the use of hearing protection, injuries and hazards, prevention and the type of hearing protection available at Spinnaker. From there, we'll move into the Spinnaker noise assessment and a summary. Legislative requirements. Under the regulations 381 15 section 1, every employer shall take all measures reasonably necessary in the circumstances to protect workers from exposures to hazardous sound levels. Every employer shall also ensure that no worker is exposed to sound levels greater than 85 decibels over an 8-hour period. If we look in the Ontario regulations, Industrial Standards 851, every employer shall take all measures reasonably necessary in the circumstances to protect workers from exposure to hazardous sound levels. Now, when it comes to hearing protection, all hearing devices must conform to the CSA Z94-2 standards. And as a general rule of thumb, hearing protection is required when noise level is above 85 decibels over an 8-hour period. <clears throat> Activities requiring hearing protection. In your work environment, exposed ears are susceptible to many physical hazards. Hearing protection is often the only practical means of preventing injuries from your physical hazards, such as using power tools, working near heavy equipment, or the acoustical environment. Now, some of the factors that can affect our hearing include the type of noise, whether the sound is continuous, intermittent, whether there's an impact, or the high and low frequency. The intensity of the noise refers to the level of loudness. And lastly, the duration of the exposure that is based on the length of time a worker is subjective to noise hazards, whether it's hours, days, or even years. Injuries and hazards. In your work environment, injuries from lack of hearing protection may result in a broad array of injuries, including hearing loss that can both be temporary and permanent. Physical hazards such as loud sounds from power tools, heavy equipment, or your acoustical environment. Now, noise hazard is a function of sound levels and duration. So, how loud is loud? Well, looking at this graph here, you can see that a raindrop produces about 40 decibels, compared to your hair dryer, which is about 90 decibels, or a chainsaw, which is 110 decibels. And lastly, your jackhammer, or even a gunshot or fireworks, which are between 120 and 140 decibels. Now, when sound enters our ear, it enters through the ear, and it goes in through the ear canal. There are small, little, tiny hair fibers inside the ear, which allows us to hear. This is just a summary chart identifying the hearing level exposures. So what we're showing here is based on this. If you're listening to steady sound levels above 85 decibels over an eight hour period, hearing protection is required. As your work environment or noise environments gets louder, you'll notice that the durations also fall off. So for example, if you're exposed to noise hazards above 97 decibels, your work exposure can only be up to 30 minutes before hearing protection is required. This is also expressed here on this chart. So anything above the line here is where hearing protection is required based on your Occupational Health and Safety Act. Prevention, types of hearing protection. At Spinnaker Industries, we offer disposable earplugs. The elasticity in them allows them to adapt easily to changes in your ear canal. Most brands can be used a few times during the day. However, you must clean your hands before inserting your plugs into your ears. The advantage of these foamable earplugs is that there's a low risk irritation and that one size fits most workers. The disadvantage is that a large supply may be needed. Let's look at a video that will tell us a little bit more about foamable earplugs and how we insert them properly. Hello, I'm Elliot Berger, Senior Scientist, Auditory Research for Aero Technologies. And I have been working with foam earplugs since they were invented in the 1970s. We have learned much since then about how to use them well and how effective they can be. This brief five minute video was created to share that information in order to optimize your wearing experience. In the next few minutes I'd like to explain to you some of the features of using a foam earplug to get the best comfort and the best protection. Although foam earplugs are relatively easy to use for fine performance, if you pay attention to these details they'll work a lot better for you. With a foam plug, unlike another piece of foam, for example, a bathroom sponge which you squash and knead and squeeze, with a foam plug there's a particular way that you want to prepare it for insertion. You want to roll it into a very tiny, tightly compressed cylinder. Now some people like to roll it along their fingers like this. Other people like to roll it around their fingers. Some people, because they need some extra finger strength, will use both hands. 
The only thing that doesn't work because it causes a distorted and creased plug is to roll it between the palms of your hands. So I prefer rolling it like this, and this is how I will demonstrate it for you. I'm going to roll it slowly without squeezing it too hard at first. As the plug gets smaller and smaller, I'm going to squeeze it harder and harder. The reason I don't squeeze too hard at first is because I don't want to squash it into a shape that will have creases or wrinkles. I'd like it to be very round and smooth so it's rolling up and down my fingers in a very smooth manner. As I get it small, I want to squeeze it as hard as I possibly can, and I'm not exaggerating. I seriously mean that this is your morning finger exercises. You want to squeeze this plug as hard as you possibly can so that you have a tiny crease-free cylinder that you can then put into your ear. The other part of inserting this plug or any other ear plug is that you're going to want to reach over your head with the hand opposite the ear that's being fitted and grasp your ear firmly and pull it outwards and upwards. The reason that we do that, as you see here, is that as we pull on the ear, it changes the opening of the ear canal. You can see how now I have my ear opened rather widely and it will be easier for me to get a plug in. For different people, the direction may vary somewhat, but in all cases, you will be grabbing the ear between the thumb and forefingers and pulling it away from the side of your head. So you roll the plug down while you have the plug well compressed. You keep rolling it. You bring it up to your ear, and now while you're holding the pinna, you insert the plug in the ear canal. There's no reason to hold the plug because once you've put it in your ear properly, it will expand in place to give you a custom, comfortable fit. One of the likeliest causes of a bad insertion of a foam ear plug is that it has been inadequately rolled down or it has been allowed to expand too much before it was brought up for insertion to the ear. What this looks like is that someone will come up to the ear with a plug inadequately compressed and then try and force it into the ear canal. It won't slide into the canal any more than it will slide out of the canal. And you can see how it looks like it's expanding out of my ear. Actually, it's simply regaining its original uncompressed shape. One gauge that's helpful to judge the fit of a foam ear plug is where the back of the plug sits relative to this little bump in front of the ear, which is called the tragus. You can see that in this case, where the plug has been poorly fitted, that much of it is outside the tragus and filling this part of the ear, which is called the concha. When a plug has been properly inserted, you can see that from this angle, you can barely see that there's any foam in my ear. I'm going to turn my head for you now slowly, and you can see how the plug has been well fitted into the ear canal. It's lost well behind the tragus. This part of the ear called the concha has no foam in it. The foam is in the ear canal itself. You can also use your finger for this test by feeling the back of the plug relative to the tragus. Another way to assess the fit of foam earplugs is to allow them to expand in your ear for about a minute or so, and then to remove them and examine the plug or read the plug, if you will, because at this point the plug will be providing a custom impression of your ear. On this plug, what you can see is that there's a wrinkle, and that wrinkle is actually a sound channel which could let sound in along the side of the plug, so that's not been a well-fitted earplug. Now on this earplug, the tip of it has been mashed back a little bit. I would like to see the end of the plug blunt and square, indicating that it had been allowed to be inserted fully and to expand to fill the canal. This one had been pushed in a little bit at the end and was running into the canal wall. On this one, you can see that about one half of it has been inserted into the ear canal. Uh, you can see by the bend here, there's no creases or wrinkles, so that is a well-fitted foam earplug. Thank you for your time. The Spinnaker Noise Assessment. Based on Spinnaker's last noise assessment, they evaluated eight key jobs. Five of those jobs were identified where workers could be exposed to sound levels at or above 85 decibels. They include the packer, the MIG welder, the assembler, and the shear operator. In all these cases, sound levels are above 85 decibels and hearing protection is required. Next, Spinnaker evaluated common tasks performed at its facilities. The following activities identified uh, workers that may be exposed to sound hazards at or above 85 decibels. They include the T-nail gun, miter saw, band saw, electric grinder, MIG welder, the 230-ton all-steel brake press, and the paint booth. Again, when you're performing any of these activities, hearing protection is required. Recommendations and controls. During the assessment, most workers were observed wearing hearing protection. 
Hearing protection is required for the following jobs, including the packer, MIG welder, assembler, shear operator, paint booth, and the 230-ton brake press. Additionally, Spinnaker must continue to train workers on hearing protection, including the proper selection, care, use, and fit, provide hearing protection to workers, including earplugs, post signs in the area where noises exceed 85 decibels, mandate that hearing protection is required on the shop floor at all times, and provide hearing protection with an NRR value of 23. Summary. Whenever we're working in a noisy work environment, including areas where sounds are above 85 decibels over an 8 hour period, hearing protection is required. When sound levels increase up to 100 decibels, you'll notice that your duration decreases to a maximum of 15 minutes. Anything over 15 minutes, hearing protection is required. Spinnaker offers foamable earbuds to protect your hearing. If you have any questions about this or any other training program, please contact a member of the Bellator group or your health and safety rep. Thank you and have a great day.